Hallelujah. Like I always tell them, call me anything. Just don't call me late for dinner, and I'm good. People say, well, what do we call you? Do we call you pastor? Do we call you doctor? Do we call you... And that's what I tell them. I don't care. My name is Sally. I think that that's fine. But <laughs> hallelujah. Are you getting worked up to take territory for God? Well, Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for last night, for what you began to plant in our hearts, in our spirits. Oh, Father, we are so excited about what you are doing in this time, in this season, God. We're not going to look behind us, but we're going to press forward and we're going to stay tuned in to what you want us to do in this time and in this season for you, taking the gospel to the around the world, to every nation, tongue, and people. And we give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. You alone are worthy of praise, God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I'm all worked up and I get a little excited. I think it comes with the red hair too, huh? Um, but I, as always, you know, God changed this message three times on me. Don't you just love when God does that? <laughs> And um, the last time he did it was while I was sitting there about five minutes ago, which that's not the first time this has happened. God likes to stretch me. I told him, how many remember Gumby? You can call me Gumby because that's, that's uh, what I feel like at some times. But I just thought this is what God's wanting to say to his people because we heard it from Apostle this morning, and Paul, thank you for such a great segue, <laughs> because he began to talk about some of what I want to talk about this morning. And, you know, I get all excited about taking all the territory, just like Apostle said. But, unfortunately, God always tends to have me give more of a some some warnings some signs some directions a very practical gospel i mean you know i read all of the translations i love all of the things but i want to tell you that there is nothing like practical application of the Word of God to your life, right? Because let's face it, if God isn't teaching you how to apply His Word and you're not learning to do the Word, what good is it in your life? It just is another book then, isn't it? Well, what I want to tell you about this taking new land stuff and this new ground, like I said, I get really excited about it. And I'm like, yes, God, let's go, let's go. And I want to go here and I want to do this. And one of the things that Paul just talked about that God wants me to remind you of is that right now, for this time, for this season, you can only take your territory. You can't try to take somebody else's territory. You know, we are, according to Corinthians, we are a part of how many bodies? One body. And God sets the members in the body where he wants them. Oh, but God, I want to go there. And I want to do this. And I want to do that over there, too. And I remember, you know, we all go through those seasons. Some of us repeat 
some of those seasons occasionally. I know you don't, but I probably am the only one that does. But um, I repeat them, and I remember one of those times when I was wanting to do something that God didn't particularly tell me to do. He gave me a picture, and God, a lot of times, especially when he's trying to correct me, shows himself to me as the captain of the host of the Most High God. He's our commander and our chief. And he showed me an, a marching army regiment. And you know how the drill sergeant, those of you that have been in the service know all about this. My husband's told me horror stories about some of the drill sergeants, but thank God, God isn't like that. But still, there is a, a, an order of authority, right? In the spirit realm, as well as in the natural. And so he's the commander. He's the commander. We're down here. He's up here, right? And he gives us our marching orders. Now, can you imagine if everybody in that regiment started going where they wanted to go? What would happen? There would be mass chaos, and nothing would get done. But if they go where they're supposed to be going, then is the power of what? Unity. They can all be united. Now, does that mean that they're all carrying guns or they're all in tanks or they're all behind, you know, whatever? I don't know. I wasn't in the service, honey. You'll have to teach me better. But <laughs> anyway, they all have their own gifting. And they're trained to use that gifting for that particular battle. And so God is training you, continuing to train. I've been walking with God for 42 years. And he still continues to correct me, to train me, to work on me, because I need it. I need it. I need to be corrected. I need to grow. I need to learn. Thank God I'm not where I used to be. Can I hear an amen? Anybody else? Yes. But I have so far to go. So far to go. And I want to be the best me for this season, for this time. One of my favorite passages to read, and, and for lack of time, I'm not going to take the time to read it. Those of you that know me know that I love the Amplified Translation of the Bible. Mark always says it's because I like a lot of words, and that could be it. I don't, I don't know. But I love the way it gives depth and insight into some of the scriptures. And so if you ever have an opportunity, it's easy for you, even if you don't own an Amplified Translation Bible, use the Bible app and look up Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. I mean to tell you, you can stay in those three verses for months. How do I know that? Because I've done it. <laughs> I've been there. I've camped out, so to speak. I've done deep digs into those three verses. And what it talks about is us running our race. Well, how many know that you have to run your own race? And if you have ever seen, like at the Olympics, where they're running races, they all have their own lane, don't they? And what would happen if they didn't want to run that lane. They wanted to run a different lane. And, and what happened, and this is one of the things that you're going to be confronted with, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're trying to run your race 
and take new ground in your territory is you are going to be confronted with comparing your race and your lane with somebody else's. Do you think for one minute the devil didn't come to me last night to sit on my shoulder and say, how do you think you can stand up there on that platform after those preachers? 42 years I've been doing this, folks. There ain't nothing new under the sun. The difference is, now I just laugh at them and say, give me a break. We've been around this block too many times. I am what I am. And you can ask anybody here that knows me. I am the same when I'm down there and out there as I am up here. This is the way I am. And I have become so secure in God, and this is part of taking your territory, nobody else's but yours, is you got to know who you are, what you're called to do, what your purpose is, and how to go after it. You know, those that know me, my, the name of my show is Life on Purpose. And um, you can read it a little bit more in, in my book, which, by the way, don't let the title fool you. It's not how to find a man. This wonderful man of mine and I have been married close to 50 years. It'll be 49 in October. I ain't looking for another man. It's really my story. And, and you'll read that I was conceived in adultery and I was told my whole life I was a mistake. Now, how many know mistakes don't have a reason for living? They don't have a purpose. And so it wasn't until I stepped into relationship with Jesus, by the way, when I had already called an attorney to file for divorce from this wonderful husband of mine, that I found out that I was worth loving. I was worth having a reason to be born. And don't think for a minute that God didn't test it and ask me to put it on the altar, but that's another whole story. But as you grow, you better know your purpose and you better stop comparing. I love to think about you know, if the characters of the Bible ever got caught up in some of the nonsense that we get caught up in, think about what about Noah and Abraham. Noah's show of his covenant symbol sign was a beautiful rainbow. Abraham got stuck with circumcision. Just saying. Imagine if they compared. Yeah, they had something to complain about, I think, but that's just me. So I also want to tell you the second of the three things that you're going to be confronted with is do I escape or do I keep going? Now, uh, just real quickly, a lot of people don't know this, but in the Garden of Gethsemane, it sits at the base of a known escape route from the city that goes over Mount, the Mount of Olives towards the Dujian Desert. The, in fact, David took this route when he was uh, running from Absalom, his son. So, just to point out, Jesus has been tempted with everything we've been tempted through. You know that night he was sweating blood? Don't you tell me for one minute that the devil wasn't sitting on his shoulder pointing out that escape route because he was human. So you got to decide, you going to escape or are you going to keep pressing through and doing what God's called you to do? And lastly, you've got to get rid of of the now thing. You've got to exchange the now thing 
for the new thing. You say, but Sally, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, but he's also the God that says, I said, I, behold, I will do a new thing. And will you not see it? That part of the scripture scares me. That means we can miss it. So you can't grab on to a new thing if your hands are full of the old thing, right? You've got to let it go and exchange it for the new things. Pray to hear what God wants to say to you. He always gives distinct boundaries. Your territory, read Genesis 15, 18, Numbers 34, the first 12 verses, Joshua 1, 4. In each one of these things where he was sending them into new land, he gave them specific perimeters. The land goes over to this river, and then it goes east to this, and then it goes south to this. You know your territory. God will always lead you to it. And I just want to stop by saying, maintain a God sense of your purpose. Know what your lane is and not only run your race, run it with excitement, passion, and when you get to my age, you start thinking about what I'm going to tell you to do. Finish well. Finish well. Not all saints do, but that's my determined purpose. Hallelujah. Bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.